I think the biggest mistake that creators make with AI is using it as a tool for knowledge rather than a tool for its like decision and reasoning capabilities. A lot of people still treat ChatGPT as like a search engine. When you do that, you got to be careful because sometimes it's going to give you something that looks plausible, it looks correct, but it's completely wrong. Hello and welcome. My name is Brent Weaver and this is the Digital Agency Show. The podcast that goes behind the scenes with today's top agencies and entrepreneurs. I am really glad you're here. And once again, it's time to transform your business mindset. We've put together an agency accelerator package for agency owners and growing freelancers looking to scale. We've got all kinds of free resources like the 39 lead gen strategies checklist, our $20,000 website proposal template, live trainings hosted by yours truly, free access to our community group, and much, much more. Get access now and dive in at yougurus.com forward slash agency. That's yougurus.com forward slash agency. Hey, what's up, podcast listeners, digital agency owners. Welcome to another episode of the Digital Agency Show. I'm your host, Brent Weaver. And today we're hanging out with Brian McAnulty. He is the founder of Heights Platform, the all-in-one AI-powered online course and community creation software that empowers thousands of creators in more than 100 countries to build knowledge businesses. Brian's entrepreneurial journey began in 2009 when he founded Valora, a digital product design studio developing products and websites used by millions worldwide, stemming from an early obsession with graphic design programs and, wait for it, Legos. Brian is a designer, developer, musician, and truly a creator at heart. With a passion for discovery, Brian has traveled to more than 30 countries, 100 cities, meeting lots of creators along the way. Brian, welcome to the program, man. Thanks so much for having me on, Brent. So you're, uh, you've made the jump from agency owner to now SaaS platform founder. Maybe give us a little bit of backstory there. What was the, um, you know, why did you make that decision to, to go to, to basically leave the product agency and start, start the SaaS? Sure. So I started my agency out of high school, actually. And uh, having done freelance graphic design and web design and stuff for some years before that. And we started as, as more of this kind of like all-in-one kind of agency. We we're doing print, web, video, even a little bit of music stuff. And as time went on, we, we became more specialized. Um, we we're actually a, a business catalyst partner. Um, yeah. As I know you were, that's how I kind of <laughs> knew about you uh, back in the day as well. And so we were doing that. We were building these websites for clients, got less involved in the the graphics and print, more involved in the web. Websites then turned into web applications. And we enjoyed what we were doing. The web applications were nice compared to the websites in a way for us because we liked that we were getting to solve these different problems rather than the same like, oh, you need an about page, you need a contact page. But eventually it still had this issue of like, clients always want to mess things up, right? So they they want to change everything and, and all that. And we wanted to figure out, well, how can we build something that's like our vision and what we want? So the an initial goal was, how can we split our time 50% between the agency and 50% between working on our projects on the side? So we did that. We tried different things. We tried uh, some digital products, e-commerce, uh, other software businesses. Eventually, that led to building Heights Platform, which is now kind of our 100% focus here today. Okay, so you're still doing some product development, or it's pretty much it's all in on Heights. No, it's it's pretty much all in Heights. We still have some of our other older products running and things, or things that we've built. But like our focus going forward in development and where our team spends the time is all on Heights. Yeah. So I mean, it's interesting because I, I feel like sometimes you talk to people and it's like this very uh, like linear journey. Like, oh, I had this idea. Mm-hmm. I, you know, well, I wanted to launch this product, and, and I'm hearing from you guys, it's it's been a little bit more of an exploration or a journey to get to the current product that you are working on. And there's, there's, um, yeah, it wasn't just like you went and got VC funding and, you know, went all in on Heights. It was like you no, used yeah, the agency to finance it. It was this more exploratory thing for us. I think, I don't think it could have happened yeah. the other way around actually, because trying all those different things, doing all those different things was really helpful for me to, Number one, like gain experience, but number two, learn what we actually enjoy building 
And Heights platform, I really feel is kind of the accumulation of like all the pieces and all the things that we became experts at that I don't think we would have been able to build it the same way, even if we had the idea like starting out. And what I mean by that is like, we got really good at building like software products. And so like, we have that as a background that we have that skill so we can build a software company. It wasn't like, oh, let's have this idea. Now we need people that can help us build it. And we understood like having tried selling other digital products and things online, like we understood what we would have needed or wanted to be able to do that successfully. And so, and we'd also built other kind of platform oriented businesses with that business model. So it kind of all came together in like the perfect storm of being able to build heights. Yeah. So in terms of, uh, did it start as an AI play? Um, I know you kind of have that now as as part of the key value proposition. Did it start there? It did not. Um, it started more so from the idea that there were ways to sell digital products online um, at the time that we first started working on Heights. But in our minds, the things where those kind of tools or platforms or solutions were failing was there's this big focus on marketing. And like, there's so many landing page builders out there and things like that. And we kind of viewed that as a solved problem. But you have these people who are these entrepreneurs that are great marketers and great at whatever it is that they wanted to teach. But then they sell you this thing and it's essentially like a couple of videos behind a paywall. And like, so the product isn't that great itself as far as what the, the student, the member, the learner actually gets to experience. And it's not really like conducive in any way to like help you learn. So my thought was, we have these social media like Facebook, TikTok, all these things like designed very specifically to like keep your attention and keep you on there as long as possible. So I thought like, well, why can't we take like certain principles and mechanics from that to build something where we're using that for learning to help students actually get results? So that and like integrating things like a community and everything from the start, that was really a big thinking of behind it because also people were like, okay, well, we'll sell you this big course or coaching program, and we're going to put you in this Facebook group. And I thought, well, surely there's got to be a better way that's like more tightly integrated for people to be able to do that, especially if the the member or students investing a thousand dollars or more to become a part of that. So that was kind of the initial thing. And now just in this past year with all the the craziness with AI, um, we've had a, a massive focus now on AI and how we can make creators' lives easier. Yeah. Hey, what's up, agency owners? I want to let you know about a hosting platform that is giving digital agencies and creators around the world an edge when it comes to site speed, scalability, and profit. It's called Cloudways, and it's designed to create exceptional experiences for you and your clients that guarantees unmatched performance, reliability, and choice with 24-7 award-winning support. Cloudways is excited to offer our listeners a $50 hosting credit in addition to their amazing benefits of their agency partner program. For more details, head over to yougurus.com slash cloudways or use promo code DASCW when signing up. Let's get back to our show. So can you give me an example? I mean, I, I know as a creator how one would leverage, let's say, ChatGPT to say, okay, I want to build a new course and I want to you know, give me a, a syllabus, right? Like, just give me sure, a, sure. a value proposition, so, give me an offer. I mean, how, how does that integrate into your platform? So the, the thinking is that kind of like the majority of our customers are independent, like solopreneurs, course creators, coaches. And I kind of feel that the, the first kind of two people you'd want to have on your team would be an assistant and a coach. And so we thought, well, how can we build everybody their own AI assistant and their own AI coach? And that turned into these kind of two features in our product, Heights AI Chat, Heights AI Coach. Heights AI Chat is kind of like more similar to ChatGPT, where it's, it's connecting the open AI APIs. And the difference being that you have access to kind of all it, well, it has access to all the information that we know. So all the things about how to use Heights and like our knowledge-based content, all the things that we've written about on our blog, our transcripts. So that means you can ask it questions that you wouldn't be able to really get an answer from with ChatGPT of like, how can I set a price for my course? Or like, what's the best strategy for setting a price for my course? But then since we've integrated it into the platform, you can go a step further and then actually ask it to do things for you. So instead of just asking it, where do you go to make the settings for your price? You can actually ask it to make those changes for you. 
And so you say like, okay, I have a, an agency course. Set the price to $1,000, make it launch in 30 days and publish the landing page. And you just write that out and they'll say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Does that sound good? And then you just click okay. So it's kind of acting like ChatGPT, but a step further and being an assistant for the actual software you're using. I'd say a coach, on the other hand, where that's different, and this is something we're still kind of even working out what's the best way to explain, because ChatGPT, you have to message it for it to do something for you, right? With I'd say I coach, it's constantly learning about the products that you're building inside your account. So any like your community, your courses, your digital products, and then it is asking you questions instead of you asking it questions. So it's going to ask you questions about like your goals, what you've been working on, and it's going to use all of that information to every week give you tasks and recommendations of what you should work on next. So kind of every creator gets their own personal coach and assistant to help them build. That's awesome, man. I I I feel like we've we've seen a lot of AI products out there that are pretty easy to like they're they're very universal like creating graphics or photos or things like that and we've had quite a few guests on this program talking about that you know the future is AI but I mean I think you just gave two really good examples of taking something that um, would have been really impossible before I mean having contextual yeah. aware yeah even even like a year and a half ago or something I think people wouldn't have even imagined that that's possible it's one thing to like get an answer from an AI but it's like oh wait it's gonna it's going to ask me questions. It's going to edit my products for me. Um, it's just really incredible what it can do. And I think a lot of the power for any anybody else out there who wants to build with AI is in building these specific tools. There's a lot of things that are out there that are popular, like of people trying to do general things. And like, I'm not talking about like ChatGPT, of course, but like other like more general tools. So like, in in the terms of like our our Heights AI coach, like that's what uh, developers would call like a autonomous agent. And there's been things people talked about like Auto GPT, Baby AGI, if you heard of those. And like they're interesting tech demos, but like they don't really work yet because they're they're a general thing that's supposed to be like the AI that can do everything. And so it's hard to make that work still with our current technology. But if you build something really specific, then it's possible. So. I think there's so many verticals where you could build these like AI teammates essentially for your business or other businesses that can be really useful. Yeah. So is the, um, I, I guess with the coach and to some degree the assistant, it's consuming your creator's content, right? Yep. How do you guys deal yeah, exactly. with, uh, I mean, I know IP is a really big discussion right now in the... I mean, gosh, in Hollywood, right? <laughs> like, who gets the IP rights, right? Is it is it Brad Pitt's content or is it, you know... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I- no, that's an awesome question. So that was something we realized would be a big concern of creators. And the way that the Heights AI Coach works, actually, is it learns about your content, but every creator has their own AI coach. So, like, we're not training the AI coach on everybody's data and then you're going to talk with somebody that it, it, it knows about everybody else's like personal answers that they've given or the products that they've created. Each AI coach is in each person's account. So it's really unique to you. And it's trained only on our instructions, like the, the system itself. So you don't have to worry about any of like your IP getting used or anything by us or, or shared to another creator in that way. So it stays completely private. The only kind of way that uh, someone on our end sees it is the coach is able to communicate with our team too. And either one, it has certain criteria where it can say like, hey, I think uh, I, I'm going to need some extra help to help this creator. And it can kind of like loop us in. And two is if like the creator gives us feedback, we can say like, oh, hey, uh, so Brent mentioned that this month he kind of wants to focus more on this instead. And we can kind of like leave that note for the coach as, it, as if it's a member of our team as well. Okay, interesting. So what about... Results, because I can imagine the assistant and maybe the coach is helping me to save time, or it's giving me suggestions. But what's do you guys have any data yet on like, hey, the AI bot cleaning up your content or cleaning up your course titles or cleaning up your landing page has helped you, you know, double sales or something? Have you gotten any kind of cool little sound bites yet? Sure. So, not like specific, really good data points yet. Um, but that's because so the AI coach is not 
formally released. We've been doing it in a, a private beta for a few months now. Okay. Probably by the time that po- this podcast airs, it will be available for everybody. The uh, I'd say I chat the assistant part um, that's been used by everybody for um, since like around March or April, depending on what features we had with it. Um, but we're definitely seeing that save people time. Uh, it's saving people on like getting answers to things instead of having to ask our support, which we're happy to answer any questions you have. But like you can get an answer essentially instantly just by asking the AI. And so in that sense, it's even faster than like a live chat. Um, but also for like the brainstorming process is we always tell people if you want to build an online course, you should brainstorm out like, OK, what's what's the, the course going to be about? What's all my my lessons, my modules? And I'd say I can go and draft you an outline from just your title, but it won't only do that. It'll actually give you recommendations on the title. So if you say, okay, uh, my course is going to be how to build an agency in 30 days, then it might actually tell you, okay, that's great. You're, you got a clear result. You specify the time frame, but maybe like what kind of agency? Maybe we should add a niche in there. And it'll actually give you advice on that to help you optimize it and then give you the whole outline of your lessons and modules. And then you can use that and say, okay, I don't need this. I'm going to change that. And now you've got this starting point instead of thinking like, where do I even start to kind of sketch everything out? Yeah. Are, are you seeing a lot of your current user base? I mean, is there any, do you have data around like them using that versus the live chat support or your normal support system? Have you seen like workload decrease on that kind of stuff? Yeah. So what we did, and I, I think what's really important for anybody to build like a similar AI tool, and this probably isn't, unique in us to anyway, but you know in ChatGPT you have the plus, uh, the thumbs up, thumbs down yep. buttons in the chat. So we have those same things. And whenever somebody does that, that goes into a separate Slack channel for our team. And so right away, we can understand if somebody either had something that the AI couldn't answer or that the AI, like they gave a bad rating to, then our team can still follow up with them and make sure that they are actually helped. And number two is we can take all those things and then make sure that we optimize our content for the AI so that way it can answer them in the future. And so, yeah, it's definitely helped our support. And like the role of our support team has focused and like shifted more from answering the questions to improving the AI so it can answer better. Yeah. Is is there a future where the creator, I mean, I guess, you know, where their content could be, man, it's, it feels like it's AI guided right now. It's like the, it's like the mm. self-driving car, right? It's like the Tesla, you know, autopilot, right? It's like you still got to be in the car, like, you know, telling it where to go and you still got to have your hands on the wheel. And and if you take your hands totally off, right? Like people end up dying or whatever. But is there a future where like there's the self-driving like course, right? Where it's like fully autonomous and you can just be like, hey, Heights, just go launch me a course on, you know, <laughs> how to be a great think, photographer. Um, and launch me a landing page and just deposit the the proceeds in my account. Yeah, I think like not quite yet. Um, I think like that's the scary idea. Like if you think down the road of AI, like what happens with like, I don't know, chat GPT like seven or something when you say make me a billion dollars and it, it goes out and does that or something. So we're not like there yet with it. But with online courses in particular, what I think is important is it's not even so much the content is like the main value that that people have, but it's your unique message. And it's like the community and everything that you provide around that. And so even if AI was helping you create more of the content in the future, like where a course creator in particularly really stands out in the marketplace is their unique take and message on things, which you can't really replicate with AI because like, if you think about like a, somebody building an agency course, there's probably a ton of different courses on how to build an agency. But like if you made one, like it's going to be unique to you. Like nobody can copy that because nobody's you. And so that's kind of my my take on on that side. But yeah, I think was, was there a second part to that question or, or was that? No, it? I think it was, I think it's a good take. I mean, I was just watching a YouTube. It was like Casey Neistat had done a full vlog. Like he had Chat GPT write him his script for one of his vlogs. I don't know if you follow him ever on YouTube or whatever, but uh, mm-hmm. it was interesting because he just he just he took the script that Chat GPT made and he just produced the exact video, and it was like 
eh, you know, like it was like the fact that it was, you know, Casey Neistat's idea was have an episode that was written and directed by ChatGPT. Like that's his unique perspective, right? And he came in and he did the whole thing, but it definitely like it just lacked that spark, you yeah. know, like it just it missed like a lot of the 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 random nuance. It's like the banter between him and his wife, for example, was like really dry and like obviously was mm-hmm. not stuff that they were would have talked about today, but it was just like it, it, it like it like had it, but it like it still was missing like that uniqueness, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. Hey agency owners, are you looking for a strategic and reliable white label partner to scale your agency business? E2M is the number one white label partner for digital agencies when it comes to website design, web development, e-commerce, SEO, and content writing. E2M is trusted by over 150 agency partners and has been providing white label services for the last 10 years. Their team has over 170 experts and is on a mission to help 500 agencies increase their revenue and profit margins with impactful white label services. Check out their transparent and flexible white label pricing at e2msolutions.com forward slash you gurus. That's www.e, the number two, msolutions.com forward slash U-G-U-R-U-S. E2M is currently running a special discount for 10% off for your first three months. Check it out now. It's available for a limited time. I think the biggest mistake that creators make with AI is using it as a tool for knowledge rather than a tool for its like decision and reasoning capabilities. And so like what I mean by that is like a lot of people still treat ChatGPT as like a search engine. And when you do that, you got to be careful because sometimes like it's going to give you something that that looks plausible, it looks correct, but it's completely wrong, right? And if you instead provide the context to it and say like, here's the information, here's the guidelines, here's how I want you to respond, then it's able to use that and give you something that that is accurate. So even in the case of like Heights AI with our assistant, the assistant is not 100% perfect on its answers sometimes, but it's using our information, our data, and it's basically taking the information we give it. So it's not going to be wrong in that sense. But um, it's the same thing like with creating content. Like it's better for you to write something and then have some kind of prompt that says like, here's my rules for evaluating this of how to make it better or, or something like that. And then task the AI with doing that rather than saying like, just write it for me. Brian, this has been super fascinating, man. I love the topic of AI, especially around course creators. Definitely hits home for me. And uh, I've pulled a lot from our conversation today. Do you have a quick minute to stick around for our lightning round? Uh, yeah, sure. What is the best advice you've ever received? Uh, um, I think uh, something along the lines of just do it. I think uh, you got to take action with what you want to accomplish. Which of your personal habits has contributed most to your success? I think my desire for, for balance, prioritizing like balance and, and lifestyle and kind of the freedom I'm looking for over maybe like financial success um, and, and other kinds of success or accolades. I think uh, that's allowed me to kind of enjoy everything I'm doing along the way rather than be stressed about it. Can you share an internet resource or tool you've been using lately that you think our listeners would find valuable? For an interesting AI thing, I think nobody's really talking about. There's a note-taking app called Obsidian. It's a free app. It's not really an AI app itself. Um, It's on like Mac, Windows, everything. But it has two plugins that I found that are these free community plugins. One's called Smart Connections. One's called Copilot. And these you can plug in an OpenAI API key and it lets you talk and ask questions with all of your notes. So I put in all my podcast transcripts there and you can say like, what's the most surprising thing I ever said or list five things that I said about this. And that it's really powerful, I think, for a creator to be able to say, I want to like organize my content and, and figure out how to repurpose it, things like that. Awesome. And what book could you recommend for our listeners? Hmm. I have not had time to read enough lately. A book, I, I wonder I wonder what it would be like to read it again now, but 4-Hour Workweek uh, made a lot of things click for me early on um, as I started my journey. And that's something that before even finishing it, I was like, okay, I get this. And my clients aren't near me anyway. I'm going to go travel the world and all that. So um, that, that was a book that helped me kind of launch my path and everything. Awesome. We will link out to uh, those two apps, the Copilot and Smart Connection as well as 
uh, The 4-Hour Work Week uh, by Timothy Ferris on our show notes page, yougurus.com forward slash podcast. So if you're listening to this week of, go to yougurus.com, click on podcast, and you'll see Brian's episode at the top. Click on him and you'll get all these tips, takeaways, links in one place. How can our audience find out more about you? Is there anything that you have for them to check out, Brian? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we've got a free community of over 6,500 creators at creatorclimb.com. It's a courses community. It's got our podcast in there. And that's all built on Heights Platform, our course software. If you want to build a course or a community of your own, then you have a free trial available at heightsplatform.com. Awesome. Well, we will make sure to add that link to our show notes. So check it out, yougurus.com slash podcast. We'll link out to Brian's free community for course creators, as well as the Heights platform. I definitely would recommend checking out their website. Uh, the AI stuff definitely piqued my interest and it's been cool to hear some of the backstory and thoughts that have gone into some of those innovations. Brian, thanks so much for stopping by the program today. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brent. And that's it for this week's episode of the Digital Agency Show. Stay tuned each and every week for more great content coming to you to help you grow your digital agency so you can achieve freedom in business and life. Until next time, I'm Brent Weaver. We've put together an agency accelerator package for agency owners and growing freelancers looking to scale. We've got all kinds of free resources like the 39 Lead Gen Strategies Checklist, our $20,000 website proposal template, live trainings hosted by yours truly, free access to our community group, and much, much more. Get access now and dive in at yougurus.com forward slash agency. That's yougurus.com forward slash agency. 